Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how to use the image tracing icon which is here. This is going to be part of the beginner's guide to scan and cut canvas that I've been doing since July 2018. Now I've already got an image downloaded onto my computer and it's this image here of the teapot with the flowers and I've got this from Graphicstock which is a program that allows you to use royalty free images and also purchase images if you want to. This particular image I've downloaded is royalty free. I'm going to show you how to trace it and then how to turn it into a shaped card. So as I said we're going to be using the image tracing icon which is this one here. It looks like a scanner with a leaf on it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a blank page open in Scan and Cut Canvas Online. I'm going to select the image tracing icon and I'm going to use this big button in the top left that says choose file. I'm going to navigate to my desktop and find that JPEG image and I'm going to select choose and in a few minutes it's going to bring it in here. Now you can see here it's got text, it's got the teapot and it's got flowers. I only want the teapot so what I'm going to do I'm going to come over to this red dotted bounding box and I'm going to start to drag it in to isolate the teapot. Now I would add that I'm only using the basic image tracing that is within your Scan and Cut canvas. I haven't bought or activated the advanced image tracing. This is just the basic image tracing that comes as standard with Scan and Cut canvas, whether you're using the cloud-based or the download version. So as you can see, I'm dragging in the little red dashed boxes just to try and isolate this teapot because I'm trying to tell the software this is the part that I want to have a cut line for to be able to use with my scan and cut. I've got it on outline. I'm going to take the colours down to two because it's basically black on white and I'm going to say preview. Now I'm going to zoom in so that you can see but basically it's put a turquoise blue outline around what it thinks is the outside of this teapot. But if you look at the handle here, there's no line in the middle. So this would be a solid piece if you cut it out and you'd lose the definition of it being a teapot, I think. So what I'm going to do, if you were happy with that, you'd just say OK and you'd put it on your map. I'm going to change the tracing options to colour, leave it on two and say preview again and this time hopefully it will pick up that space in the middle of the handle and as you can see it has it's got a blue turquoise box around there now so basically that's what I want I'm going to say okay I don't want to paste the selected image into the background I just want the cut outline of my teapot now I'm going to zoom in so all as I did there was I clicked on the magnifying glass and then just left clicked and dragged an imaginary box around this tracing. I'm going to select this little star and hit the delete key on the keyboard or the backspace because I don't want that. Now if you look at this, if I click on the lid you'll see that's one element, if I click on the body that's another and if I click on the inside that's another. Now what I want to do, I want this section cut out from this bottom section. Now if you weren't welding it wouldn't really matter. If you just wanted to cut this in card and have a lid as a different colour and a body as one colour, you'd be fine. The machine would follow all these black lines and you could just discard that piece once you've cut it. But I want to weld this lid to the base because I want this cut as one teapot image because I want to make it into a shape card. So the easiest way to do that first of all is to subtract any of these stray inner bits like you do with the insides of letters for B's and E's and G's, things like that that I like I've shown in other videos. So to subtract this, this bit has to be on top of the main body. So when I click on the body, it's selecting all the main part of the teapot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure this is to the front. So I'm right clicking and go bring to front. I just want to select this inner bit. I'm going to hold the shift key down 
and just select the bottom half of the teapot. And now I'm going to come to edit and process overlap and subtract. And that should now punch this in a bit out of the teapot. And I know it has done because I'm clicking in here and it's selecting the whole part. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select the teapot and just using the four directional arrows on my keyboard, I'm going to use the up directional arrow and take this teapot up ever so slightly until it overlaps this lid. Then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both and I'm going to come to edit and weld. And that has now given me one shape. So from a JPEG image of a teapot, we've isolated the outline and we've given ourselves a cut file of a teapot. So if I go back to fit to mat now, you'll see that's a teapot. And if that's what you wanted, that would be brilliant. And then from here, you could go on to the edit icons and add insets and offsets, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to show you how to do the basic editing. Now, if you wanted to turn this into a shaped card, with it selected, I'm going to right click and hit duplicate. I'm going to select the duplicate and I'm going to go to edit, flip, horizontal. I'm going to select them both by dragging an imaginary box. And by that, I mean, I'm clicking somewhere either below or above the, the images. And I'm just left clicking and dragging out a blue, gray imaginary box until I've got everything I want selected and then I'm letting go. Now I'm going to come to edit, come to the align icons and choose bottom and they're now aligned on the bottom edge. I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect. I'm going to click on one of them, it doesn't matter which one, in my case the right hand one and again using the four directional arrows on my keyboard I'm using the left arrow and I'm going to scoot this one over until they overlap here. Now, I just want to show you something. I only want them to overlap on the outer edges. I don't want this outside edge to come into this space here. So now I've got them overlapped, I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both again and I'm going to come back to edit down to the process overlap and weld. And that's going to weld the two sections together to give me when this is folded a front and a back. Now, if you made this into a card and folded this in half, the only section that would hold this card together is this bit here, where it's welded. So this bit would flop around when you put it on your mantelpiece or your tabletop or whatever. So you've got options. You can either add a bridging piece in here or you can add a bridging piece onto the bottom to give the card more stability. I prefer adding it onto the bottom. So I'm going to come to the basic shapes, I'm going to grab a rectangle, I'm just going to squash it down until it's about an inch in height, it's not vital, and then I'm going to drag it out. Now it doesn't matter what size, I'm just doing it by eye, and I'm just going to leave it kind of offset for now like this. I'm going to drag a box around everything, I'm going to come to edit and I'm going to use align centre and that has now centred this rectangle to these two teapots. So now I'm going to select them both and I'm going to go edit and weld and now when you fold this card in half this card has got more stability because it's held together here and with your fold line down, it's held together on the bottom. Now I'm just going to use the path icon and draw in a dash line just to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to left click up here, let go, and then just move my mouse down, but hold my shift key down at the same time, which just only gives me a perfectly straight line. Then I'm just going to double click on the mouse to anchor that line. While it's selected, I'm going to come to cut line and I'm just going to change it to a dash line. And I'm just going to make it red just so hopefully it's easier to see on the video. I'm going to select both. So by that, I mean the dash line and now this whole shape. 
And again, I'm just going to do edit and center to get it in the center. And that's just a visual for you to see on the screen. So when this would be folded, your card is held together here and then here. Now, if you want to, you can make this bottom bit so it comes out as wide as the spout, but I'm not unduly bothered about that. I just want to show you how to do the basics for making any image you find into a shaped card. By also adding this section on the bottom, it gives you an area where you can stamp a greeting or where you could add a greeting and get the scan and cut to, to draw the greeting for you. So I'm just going to go back to fit to mat. So that is now basically my shape card. I'm going to select everything, right click and say group. And that is now all grouped together. It will all move as one. I'm going to come over here to the project title. I'm just going to call it tracing video. And I'm going to use the second icon along here, which is it's, if you hover over it, it's called Overwrite This Project, which basically just means save. So I'm going to save it. It's told me it's com saving is complete. And now that is a file. I can either download it via Wi-Fi or put it onto a USB stick. And I can now cut that out of a piece of card and I will have a teapot shaped card. Look at the other videos in the playlist called Beginners and you'll find lots more helpful tips on using Canvas. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and make sure the bell notification icon is switched on so that you'll always be notified when I up upload videos to my YouTube channel and that way you won't miss anything. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.